Hello everybody, I'm Jeff White and I got a request to talk about playing on multiple strings. Now this is a wonderful technique you can use to add harmony. And I'll tell you a story. When I was, when I was a kid learning to play the violin at recitals, I would sit there and be terrified that when I came up to play that I would hit another string. I would only want to play on one string, and if I brushed on another string, that was just inconceivably horrible, and I prayed that would never happen. And years later, I had another teacher who taught me to use multiple strings in a piece that I played. She said, this is a piece you're going to play, and it's going to have these multiple strings that you're going to play, and you're going to harmonize. And I was like, oh this is a thing I can do. And at the recital, I played the piece and I, I think I played it well enough. And my grandmother came up to me in tears afterwards saying that I had achieved such a wonderful sound with my violin. And so that really stuck with me. So here's some things to keep in mind about playing on multiple strings. Now what you can do with a tune, you can certainly play it on one string is that's well and good. And sorry about hitting the bridge there. But what you can do is you can do things like this. All right. So there are ways that you can make that sound like there are two instruments playing at once and add some harmonies in there. And the thing to keep in mind is when you're practicing, don't be afraid to experiment. See what works. And you don't have to harmonize every note. Playing two strings, we also call them double stops in the violin world. It, it, it can sound kind of uh, dissonant when you do things like... It just doesn't work, so pick your spot with it. Now, there's a difference between playing an open note like I've been doing and then playing with two fingers. So what, I, what I've been doing is just throwing in this D string and open G string lower than what I'm playing. So if I go... I add that open D to the uh, to the D on the A string, so and that's a perfect perfect octave. Now what you can do is uh, like that, or you can and where there I'm playing basically the rudiments of a chord. I'm using my first finger on the D and G string to pr provide what's really the fifth of uh, the fifth chord, the five chord. So again, don't be afraid to experiment. And this really just comes with practice. I would really start with playing open strings first so you can get comfortable with playing the the double stop and also practicing when to use it and when not to i you can get in the habit of playing the double stops too much and then when it comes time where you need to just play that one single string you'll find that you've gotten in the habit of playing two strings and you can't find that single string and that brings up a a point about bridges with your your violin bridge that is a crucial part of your sound if you're going to throw in double stops. And your bridge right here on your violin or fiddle, the shape of it is going to play a crucial role. If you'll look, I'm going to try to frame this against my shirt here. If you'll look and see the arc of the bridge there. And I hope you all can hear me. The arc of the bridge is important because if you have a very high arc 
it's going to be perhaps more difficult to throw in double stops, but on the other hand, it's easier to play single strings and not have those accidental two strings like I was always dreading when I was a kid. Now, I have a very flat bridge, so it's very easy for me to throw in double stops, and it's very difficult for me, actually, to find those single strings, so that takes a lot of practice. And really, it's just experiment with different fiddles, try them in the store, and don't be afraid to take your time and see what works for you. And also, you can buy different bridges. You can have those set up relatively easily. So that's, that's a note about bridges. Now, what I've been doing is throwing in this low string. So you can also throw in a high string, but again, you've got to understand your keys and where to harmonize. So, so, and that sounds pretty good, but when I get to that D, that doesn't quite, that, that's a little better, and I've had to throw in my, uh, my first finger. Or you can uh, use the high string as a drone. I find that this takes a lot more practice, so something like... So, and you heard me squeaking a little bit there. So, it does take a little bit more practice to play on that higher string because I find that my fingers tend to interfere with that string that's uh, one step high. I keep on saying practice, 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 and that really is true. A lot of this is done in the first position, so you don't have to worry about throwing in second, third position. If you're going to be going, especially to second position, you're in playing some of those more inaccessible keys, what I would consider inaccessible keys like C and maybe E, you're going to be using both fingers on your strings. So I for beginners, I would recommend trying with your drone strings, playing in the key of D and G. Also, playing with double stops is a great way to figure out if you're in tune. You're going to know right away. Yeah, that sounded really bad. So you got... The, that's one thing you need to know about playing double stops is that if you're not really confident in your intonation, you're going to find out really fast. And that might be a good technique for learning and making sure that you are staying in tune. Um, and that's really what I have to say about playing two strings. Feel free to comment and hope to see you next time.